हेलो एंड वेलकम टू बायोलॉजी क्लास वी आर स्टडिंग टॉपिक किंगडम एनिमेलिया एंड सो मेनी डेज वी आर स्टडिंग दिस टॉपिक वी स्टडीड सो मेनी डिफरेंट फाइलम्स इन दिस टॉपिक एंड वी फ्यू डेज बैक वी स्टार्टेड स्टडिंग फाइलम कॉर्डेटा एंड वी आर स्टडिंग फर्दर क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ कॉर्डेटा एंड वाइल स्टडिंग द फर्दर क्लासिफिकेशन टूडे वी रीच टू द last super class of this topic which is nothing but super class tetrapoda in this video we will start learning super class tetrapoda and then in further videos we will start its further classification so let us quickly begin with the tetrapoda so super class tetrapoda now when we consider tetrapoda tetra means a four tetra means what four and poda means legs so this super class tetrapoda include animals with four legs okay uh, so this is uh, a calf okay which clearly show its four legs now when we see this it is having two front legs one and two and two back legs okay now front legs are called as four limbs what does they are called as four limbs okay so there is a pair of four limbs in tetrapoda and pair of back legs are called as hind limbs so there is a pair of four limbs four limbs and there is a pair of hind limbs okay so this is a typical characteristics of tetrapoda so all the organic all the animals which are included in the tetrapoda are having four legs four limbs okay now but there are few exceptions so let us study those exceptions and we'll go ahead now this is first exception that is snake have you ever seen snake with legs no snake is not having legs still it is included in tetrapoda why see snake is included in tetrapoda because the ancestor of snakes were having legs but as the snake is a fossorial animal it is uh, staying in burrows it is modified so legs were like you know um, hindering them legs were uh, reducing its resistance and legs were not useful it useful for snake so during the evolution process the snake lost its legs so ancestors were having legs but right now today snake is not having legs still it is included in tetrapoda some other animals are included in tetrapoda are birds okay now in case of birds its four limbs that is its front legs are modified into wings okay in case of birds four limbs are modified into wings for the flying purpose now another example of tetrapoda is this dolphin this is what a, a picture of dolphin now when we consider dolphin its four limbs are modified for the purpose of swimming okay so basically it should have four limbs and according to its function according to the evolution of animal the limbs are modified understanding now in case of uh, many aquatic uh, aquatic tetrapoda the hind limbs are not there they are you know just like snake during the evolution process they are uh they are removed during evolution understanding so this is all about the tetrapoda general characteristic so let us go ahead and study classification of tetrapoda now when we consider this tetrapoda this super class tetrapoda is divided into four different classes and this uh, classes is based on the what type of skin they are having remember the basis of classification what type of skin they are having on that basis tetrapoda are divided into four different classes so let us uh, study the that classification now see tetrapoda the first class in the tetrapoda is amphibians now amphibians in this case skin is very smooth and uh, you know uh, with mucus slimy mucus then second class is reptiles now when we consider reptiles in case of reptiles skin is rough non glandular and skin is adapted for the you know desert conditions then apes skin is covered by feathers okay and in case of mammals skin is covered by hair 
so remember this the tetrapoda basis of classification is a type of skin never forget it okay so now we will study each class and its characteristics and examples as usual we will take uh, examples of each class and then we will apply some characteristics to it and we will see the characteristics of amphibia now as we studied so many phylums its characteristic now you must be knowing the pattern of how to write the characteristic how to understand the characteristic so i need not to explain everything in much details isn't it so let us begin and study characteristics of amphibia now when we consider amphibia amphibia commonly include frog okay all kind of frogs are included in amphibia whether it is frog frog living on tree the frog which is living on tree it is called as hyla okay so hyla is also included in amphibia the normal frog which is jumping here and there that is also included in amphibia even uh, toad which is larger size frog it is also included in amphibia now whatever picture i have selected for this uh, video now this picture is uh, is the picture of one kind of frog which is the smallest vertebrata on earth now it is a size is only 17 mm okay and in this picture it is kept on 1 dollar coin okay and uh, it is so small it is even not half of that coin it is only 17 point some 5 mm in in its uh, in its whole diameter okay so uh, this is um, this is the smallest vertebrata on earth and it is included in amphibia the another common amphibian is uh, this animal called as sicilian now sicilian is look like earthworm but it is not an earthworm it is an uh, amphibian and it's a blind amphibian this is his head it don't have eyes and it is very common in uh, all the moist forest even in the amboli forest it is very common uh, common animal the another uh, animal which is included in amphibia are this salamander now this particular species yellow and black salamander it is very very toxic species of salamander uh, but uh, salamanders are also included in amphibia salamanders are not commonly found in india they are basically common animals in american continent okay uh, so these are the animals included in amphibia so let us uh, go and study its characteristics now when we consider first characteristic of amphibian amphibia the word amphi means both word amphi means both so the animal which is having biased life or two lives both life is called as amphibia means these animals can survive in water as well as can survive on land and they are you know uh, living in water as well as in land so such animals are included in amphibia now uh, that's why the name amphibia is given now when we consider uh, consider this amphibia generally its larval stages of the animals are staying in water and adults are generally land living but many a times some adults are also staying prefer to stay in water so these are the amphibians uh, amphibians generally larval stages staying in water and adult stages generally stay in uh, on land <clears throat> now uh, skin is always very thin skin and glandular glandular means with glands it is the skin is provided with gland the skin is basically provided with mucus gland okay so mucus is a slimy secretion which is always covering the animal covering the skin of the animal that's why this animals look shiny okay all frogs are very shiny because of this mucus gland and they are always they try to keep their skin moist okay and here the term vascular is given vascular means what high blood supply the skin is having very high blood supply now next thing is its limbs limbs means legs so there are two pairs of limbs pect uh, four limbs and hind limbs now when we consider all the limbs in case of frog or in case of hyla they are pentaduct uh, pentaductile they are pentaductile limbs now uh, when i consider its spelling is wrong pentaductile limbs 
Now when I consider a pentaductyle, pentaductyle means with five finger like things, okay, five digits, okay, we are also pentaductyle, we are having five digits. So likewise amphibians are also having five digits, okay. Now digits are either with nail or in some cases it is with claw, so it depends on the animal. Now next thing is about its digestive system. Now almost all the amphibians are carnivorous animals. Okay, they uh, that's why they they need to capture the food. Okay, frog is also carnivorous. It feed on insects. Okay, uh, that's why it is uh, it is um, that's why it is farmer's friend. Okay, now uh, so as it is carnivorous, it eat the insect. Its mouth is wide open. Okay, its mouth, uh, their mouth are almost all amphibians are having wide, widely opening mouth. And digest uh, elementary canal is there. Uh, and this elementary canal end as a cloacal aperture, just like in shark. Okay, and uh, as uh, the frogs are capturing uh, capturing insects, its tongue is protractable. Means uh, it can you know go long and capture the insect. Okay, so this is about its digestive system. Now next is about its endoskeleton, bony endoskeleton. Obviously, now few things you need to remember in case of frog and its skeleton. Now remember. Notochord is developed into vertebral column. So vertebral column is very well developed in case of uh, case of amphibians, and the head is attached to the um, attached to the vertebral column. And now this cranial that is our brain box, fro frog's brain box, our frog's head is on one vertebra. It is called as atlas. So atlas vertebra hold the head. Okay. Atlas is the vertebra which is holding the head and the next vertebra is known as axis but in case of amphibians there is no axis that's why there is no neck frog cannot move its neck if axis is there we can move neck we can move our neck because we are having axis vertebra but frog cannot move its neck okay if frog want to see behind it need to jump behind and watch okay then it is having single sacral vertebra so remember atlas is present axis is absent and only single sacral vertebra is there okay then uh, its limbs that is fore limbs and hind limbs are supported by girdle fore limbs are supported by pectoral girdle and hind limbs are supported by pelvic girdle so two girdles are there as its skeleton see remember about skeleton bony endoskeleton one atlas no axis and single sacral vertebra as well as pectoral and pelvic girdles are there okay then about its circulatory system three chambered heart two auricles only single ventricle rbcs are oval biconvex and nucleated then when we consider respiratory system of amphibians the young amphibians that is larval stages are having gills so they do branchial respiration okay larval stages do branchial respiration but in case of adult respiration is by three ways remember i am going little faster because now i think now you know all these terms i need not to explain those so just try to understand them uh, them as an overview larval stages do branchial respiration but adults do respiration by three ways cutaneous means with the help of skin frog skin do respiration okay then buccopharyngeal means buccal means mouth and pharyngeal means respiratory tract okay so buccopharyngeal respiration means respiration with the help of mouth okay and pulmonary respiration as usual with the help of lungs so respiration by all possible ways are done in the amphibians okay now uh, nervous system there are 10 pairs of cranial uh, cranial nerves and cerebellum that is the main part of the brain is not much developed it is reduced so amphibians are not very brainy they are kind of dumb animals now next one is sense organs very well developed sense organs are there basically eyes are very well developed and they are the first one who are having eyelids they can close their eyes whenever required and they can open their eyes whenever they want okay fish don't have this uh, facility then next one is only two type of ears external ears are totally absent only middle ear and internal ear is present okay then larval stages of amphibians are and aquatic amphibians even show lateral line sensory system do you remember lateral line sensory system 
it is to understand water current okay and most of the aquatic animals are provided with sen this sensory system then they are ureotelic animals in adults that is frog is ureotelic excrete waste product in the form of urea and uh, but larval stages are aminotelic because they are aquatic they can easily excrete ammonia as a waste product and pair of kidneys work as a excretory system the next one about its body temperature cold blooded animals okay these are cold blooded animals their body temperature changes along with the environmental temperature and they undergo hibernation and estivation now do you remember hibernation what is hibernation and what is estivation hibernation is winter sleep and estivation is summer sleep so some amphibians undergo hibernation some undergo estivation okay now about their reproduction now these all the amphibians are unisexual means male and females two separate individuals females are generally oviparous means females are egg laying they lay their lay their eggs outside and generally fertilization is external now uh, external fertilization is very famous in case of frog okay frog female lay egg in the water okay and male go and fertilize those eggs afterward okay but in case of salamander this is fertilization is internal fertilization takes place inside the female body development is almost always uh, indirect development mm, amphibians are very well known for this its indirect development now there are several larval stages are present in case of frog the larva is called as a tadpole okay it is a fish like larva it is called as tadpole and in case of salamander the larva is called as axolotl larva okay and um, conversion of larval stages to adult stage is called as metamorphosis so this is all about the different characteristics of amphibian there are total 13 characteristics and try to remember every one of them so examples of toad salamander meat uh, then then ichthyophis etc so this is all about amphibians the first class of tetrapoda in next video we will see you with the next class in the tetrapoda that is reptiles till then goodbye take care